U.S.-Taiwan ties have entered a new chapter under the Biden administration and with increasing aggression from China towards Taiwan. Will the U.S. change its policy towards Taiwan? Well, to give us insight into U.S.-Taiwan ties is our ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Xiaobi Kim. Um, ambassador Xiao is Taiwan's first female ambassador to the United States. Before serving in this post, she also served Taiwan as a national security advisor, a four-term lawmaker, and a presidential advisor. Ambassador Xiao, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Well, it's a pleasure uh, to uh, greet all of uh, our listeners here. And um, the Taiwan-U.S. relationship is a very important one. So I'm pleased to have the opportunity to share our views. Well, thank you. And we noticed that there was a new development um, in U.S.-Taiwan ties recently when the U.S. State Department issued some new guidelines about how U.S. and Taiwan officials can interact with each other. Now, I know these guidelines haven't been made public, but could you tell us some of the most significant changes? Well, uh, the guidelines had been under review uh, for some time. Uh, there had been a lot of momentum from bipartisan members of Congress uh, to review uh, the need to support the breadth and the depth of our strong relationship that we have. And um, the State Department has recently finalized that review process. And this uh, enables um, the um, representatives of Taiwan and the United States uh, to engage um, at locations that uh, were previously restricted um, in terms of access. Uh, it also broadens um, the opportunities and encourages, and I think it's important to emphasize the word encouragement, um, because in the announcement, um, the State Department does um, seek to utilize the new guidelines as a foundation for encouraging broader engagement between the two sides. And that is not only here in Washington and Taipei, it is around the world. Our partnership uh, is a very productive one. Uh, there are many opportunities to engage, uh, to support each other. Um, and we especially appreciate uh, recent U.S. support for Taiwan's international participation. Yeah, we see a lot of uh, goodwill actually coming from the Biden administration. Uh, we noticed that he invited you to his inauguration, which is the first for a Taiwan ambassador since 1979. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that U.S. commitment to Taiwan is rock solid. So it's, it's nice to see the reassurances that the Biden administration is giving Taiwan could you tell us what you see in the Biden administration's policy towards Taiwan and China so far? Well, first on their policy towards Taiwan, they have emphasized Taiwan as a leader in democracy and also a very important security and economic partner. And um, the previous administration had described Taiwan as a force for good. If you bring the force for good, a, a leader in democracy, and a critical partner in security and economics. Uh, that does uh, kind of characterize the broad relationship that we have. We appreciate the strong support and the Biden administration has used the phrase rock solid um, in our relationship. Um, and the continuity in support does reflect that it is a rock solid in a bipartisan way as well. And we appreciate uh, the many bipartisan members of Congress that are also playing an important role uh, in this relationship. Uh, the Biden administration has on numerous occasions uh, reassured uh, their continuing support of Taiwan uh, in our international space, in Taiwan's security, um, and also um, in many areas of our bilateral relationship, uh, including education cooperation, science and technology cooperation, uh, Coast Guard uh, cooperation and humanitarian rescues. Um, there's so much in our relationship and we do look forward to continuing the partnership. Um, a lot of focus uh, right now is on the economic recovery um, in light of uh, uh, the world dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so much cooperation is also expected uh, in global health, uh, as well as in economic progress in both our countries, as well as partnerships uh, around the world. 
Um, in regards to their relationship with China, it's been characterized um, as a competitive one um, by uh, many members of the administration. Uh, for Taiwan, um, China is a complicated relationship uh, involving uh, serious security threats, uh, but also a complicated uh, economic relationship uh, and political history. And uh, um, ultimately, Taiwan's goal is to sustain a strong democracy uh, in our society so that the people of Taiwan uh, have the right to determine their own future. Yes, and we do see that, you know, I would like to ask you actually about um, a question that many people in Taiwan are concerned about and around the world too, is the defense of Taiwan in, in face of a greater threat from China. China has had more uh, military activity near Taiwan and the U.S. actually has expressed concern about that. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has uh, expressed concern over Chinese aggression near Taiwan. Also, he mentioned that, you know, it would be a serious mistake if anyone would unilaterally uh, change the status quo but when asked about what the U.S. would do if China attacked Taiwan, he usually uh, declines to answer, uh, you know, decides to keep the longstanding U.S. policy of being ambiguous about that very key scenario. And I am curious about your thoughts about U.S. strategy in that respect of being ambiguous about how they would respond to a Chinese attack on Taiwan. Do you think that the strategy is good for Taiwan? Is it beneficial in helping keep the peace around the Taiwan Strait? Well, uh, the threat against Taiwan security comes at uh, different levels and it comes in different forms. Um, in addition to a broader uh, invasion, um, we are currently uh, facing uh, coercion uh, in gray zone areas. Uh, we're also facing cyber threats. We're also facing um, political interference. Um, there, there are many different types of um, security situations. And um, although the U.S. Uh, does not uh, want to engage in public discussion on the various contingencies, um, we are in very close coordination uh, in terms of dealing with the challenges uh, in maintaining peace and stability in the region. And I think what is important is that we have a common interest in continuing that stability. Uh, we appreciate the multiple reassurances uh, of U.S. support for Taiwan. Uh, we also appreciate that um, the U.S. engaged with uh, their important ally um, in the region, Japan, uh, in on the senior level in a joint statement, um, recognizing the importance of peace and stability uh, in the region. And that is uh, very much in line with, with our hopes and expectations um, in uh, continuing uh, to secure the stability of the Taiwan Strait. Um, we also have to recognize that the threats um, and challenges are not only a matter of Taiwan's concern. Uh, we've seen increasing activities on part of China in the South China Sea um, that uh, also poses um, challenges to the freedom of navigation um, and stability uh, in the region as well. And so we hope that uh, this is a matter uh, deserving of continuing uh, international attention. Uh, and it, uh, we also want to call on the PRC um, to, instead of uh, using uh, military threats, uh, to uh, engage with us in terms of uh, dialogue um, as a stakeholder in the region um, in our common interest of maintaining peace. So do you think that um, China would be willing to engage in dialogue with Taiwan? Well, this is something that we continue to urge them to do. It's also something that we believe is in line with international expectations as well. Mm. So you had mentioned that actually that, uh, you know, uh, U.S. President Joe Biden is working with allies such as Prime Minister uh, Suga from Japan. Uh, we also saw at the G7 that they did mention the importance of peace, you know, in the Taiwan Strait. How do you expect that the U.S. will continue to work with allies to help maintain peace in the region? Well, peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait um, is uh, certainly in the interest of um, all other um, stakeholders in the region as well as around the world. And um, Taiwan has played a very important role in the global supply chain. Um, Taiwan is a peace-loving uh, society um, with uh, strengths uh, demonstrated through our fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we're a force for good in the world. and. 
we have much to contribute. And so we do believe that um, um, it is certainly a matter of a global interest. Uh, it is also a matter of Chinese interest um, in ensuring that um, all stakeholders in the region can continue to develop uh, in a peaceful environment. Hmm. I've seen some congressmen and experts um, raise the possibility of being more high profile about um, the U.S.'s commitment to defending Taiwan. There have been some acts in Congress, such as the US, uh, Taiwan Defense Act, the Taiwan Invasion Prevention Act, which would call on the U.S. to defend Taiwan in the case of a Chinese attack. Do you think that the U.S. policy might change in that direction because of the growing threat from China? Well, we um, very much appreciate uh, the interest on um, part of me many members of Congress uh, in the defense and uh, maintaining peace in the Taiwan Strait. And um, I, I believe that many of these initiatives uh, do highlight the significance of the partnership that we have, uh, and as well as highlighting the fact that the stability of the Taiwan Strait is in the interest uh, of the United States as well as the broader Indo-Pacific region. Uh, we will continue to engage in these discussions um, and uh, certainly the U.S. Uh, continuing commitment to Taiwan uh, that is based on the Taiwan Relations Act um, uh, and that is a strong foundation in facilitating continuing dialogue uh, in joint efforts in uh, preserving the stability of the region. Mm. And you had mentioned that uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that the U.S. commitment to Taiwan is rock solid. So what do you think he means by that? Well, I, I do believe that, and I said this on um, the day of President Biden's inauguration, is that is uh, we share interests and we share values. Um, our common values are freedom and democracy, our interests. Um, are in the peace and stability of the region as well as economic prosperity. And, uh, and that is certainly what, what binds our, our societies, our peoples, our governments uh, together in joint efforts um, in advancing those values and interests. Um, Taiwan stands on the front line uh, in facing uh, multiple challenges uh, to our democratic system. And uh, U.S. support for us uh, is, is very important. Um, I do believe that rock solid support uh, involves um, support in many areas, and that is um, demonstrated um, in U.S. leadership in, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, joint G7 statement, uh, U.S. leadership in calling on the global community to support Taiwan's international participation, and also uh, U.S. leadership in uh, continuing uh, freedom of navigation operations uh, in the region um, as a strong deterrence um, against any consideration of unilateral military action that would upset the status quo. Well, it's good to see that uh, the U.S. is expressing its commitment to Taiwan as Taiwan faces many challenges. And you did mention that we are also growing closer economically. Um, Taiwan is uh, the U.S.'s ninth largest trading partner and we are hoping for a bilateral free trade agreement with the U.S. How are talks um, on this agreement uh, progressing? Well, our uh, economic ties are very strong. A few months ago, um, we initiated the Economic Prosperity Partnership Dialogue uh, that highlighted uh, many uh, issues of common interest, uh, including supply chain security, uh, 5G security. Uh, it included uh, women's economic empowerment, uh, science and technology cooperation, and also uh, investment screening um, mechanisms, uh, et cetera. There are many issues of, of common interest. Um, there's also an interest in working together uh, to support um, investment and infrastructure development and markets uh, in, in, in third countries, uh, in, in other um, economies as well. So uh, that partnership uh, continues to grow. Um, on the trade side, um, the United States uh, for a long time has expected Taiwan to uh, further uh, demonstrate Taiwan's determination uh, to synchronize our trade practices and standards um, in terms of market access. And um, President Tsai has uh, taken steps uh, to address those um, challenges and to demonstrate Taiwan's determination uh, to meet uh, global trading standards. 
and uh, we hope that that will pave the way for further advancing our trade uh, partnership. Um, the current U.S. administration uh, is currently reviewing um, its trade policy, and we we've seen a number of public hearings, um, um, you know, discussing a workers-centered trade policy. Uh, we do believe that uh, deepening the trade relationship with Taiwan uh, would advance workers' interests both in Taiwan and the United States. And our supply chains reinforce each other. Our economies are very much complementary and reinforcing. And um, engaging in, in trade discussions would further uh, be a signal of confidence to the business communities uh, in both our societies in terms of uh, further deepening our trade partnership. We also have a common interest uh, in diversifying our global trade uh, so that we are not vulnerable uh, to um, political coercion uh, on our economic relations. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of countries that are dealing with challenges uh, of economic coercion uh, also share that interest. And this is a, a very challenging area, but uh, it's something that we do have to work on with other like-minded partners and market economies uh, in a rules-based international system. So it's great to see that uh, U.S.-Taiwan ties are growing on many economic Fronts. Are you hopeful for a bilateral trade agreement to eventually uh, happen with the United States? Well, we are uh, working on, on that goal um, eventually. Um, the current administration um, has uh, announced that uh, they are not um, pursuing immediately um, trade deals, uh, broader trade deals. Uh, however, we do want to work with our counterparts here in terms of laying the groundwork uh, for advancing our trade relationship. Uh, because we do believe that a strong trade partnership is good for both our economies. Uh, it will help to advance um, and, and produce progress in terms of the global economic recovery. And um, I think our friends uh, in, on the U.S. side uh, do also recognize the value of strong trade ties with the United States. And the value of that has also been highlighted on numerous occasions uh, by our friends in the U.S. administration. Mm -hmm. Well, Ambassador Shaw, I also like to ask you about the lighter side of um, diplomacy. Taiwan sometimes uses humor to deal with its challenges uh, with China and with the WHO. Uh, for example, last year when Taiwan was having tensions with the WHO, uh, the WHO director had accused Taiwan of some racist attacks. And then we responded with this hashtag, this attack comes from Taiwan. And there are pictures of beautiful beaches from Taiwan, delicious food, and President Tsai even tweeted a picture of her with her cats. And uh, she had said that, you know, we don't have a first lady or first gentleman in Taiwan, we have first cats. And recently this year, we had a hashtag freedom pineapple campaign when China decided to ban the import of Taiwanese pineapples. And I know that you were gifting a lot of people uh, in town with dried pineapples from Taiwan. And Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo had tweeted a picture of himself enjoying that snack, saying, as a proponent of freedom, enjoying some Taiwanese dried pineapple, checkmate. He was playing chess. So um, how would you describe the use of humor in Taiwan's soft power and diplomacy? Well, I, I think Taiwan is one of the most open, uh, diverse, and uh, innovative, uh, creative societies uh, in in um, East Asia, and um, our, our people are really taking advantage of that open uh, freedom of speech, that space for innovation and being creative uh, about um, having our voice heard uh, in the international community and uh, having Taiwan's presence um, felt in a positive and constructive way. And uh, Taiwan uh, does want to be uh, supportive and, and playing a, a, a positive role uh, in, in the international uh, organizations um, and international society. We do want to utilize the many um, characteristics of our culture and our society uh, in the process of uh, securing greater support, whether it involves um, food, um, <laughs> culture, uh, pineapples, <laughs> uh, music, or sports. You know, last year we were um, there, there were a few months where Taiwan was the only country in the world playing uh, baseball 
during the the pandemic and you know we 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 do want to to showcase the diversity the um openness of our society and and the the many aspects of our culture and creativity as we express to the world our desire uh, to be that force for good. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful way to um, display what Taiwan is all about. And and one aspect of our societies is gender equality. I know that you are the first female ambassador to the United States. We have a female president. 42% of our lawmakers are female. Um, what do you think about what it's like to be a female in politics? Are there any special challenges or advantages um, about being a woman in politics and in diplomacy? Well, um, I think women in Taiwan have come a long way in terms of um, um, the fight for gender equality. Uh, when I was first elected in 2001, um, in the national legislature, uh, we were just over 20% uh, women. And um, now, as you said, we're 42%. Uh, so we have really come a long way. And I think um, there, there certainly have been many challenges, including uh, traditional uh, prejudices and expectations of the role of women uh, that have uh, kind of restricted uh, public support and also sometimes even private family support for women's uh, political participation. Uh, but I think we have had a lot of, um, you know, uh, movers and shakers in terms of breaking that glass ceiling and that has inspired uh, many more women. Uh, I have personally been inspired in my own political career by women who came before me uh, who had a harder time than I did in uh, breaking that glass ceiling and in overcoming um, public um, prejudices and expectations uh, of the role of women. And so I think now that we have a more prominent role, not only in politics, but in business in art and in, 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 in sports in many areas um, uh, of public life in Taiwan, um, I, I think, um, you know, we, we, we certainly want to highlight the fact that respect for diversity, the respect for uh, gender equality um, is something that um, also contributes to um, progress in our economy um, mm -hmm. and in our politics in general. And um, I, I think this aspect is something that we also uh, try to share with our other friends and partners around the world. And we're very proud of, of where we've come. I think there's still a lot we need to do uh, in terms of continuing the advancement of gender equality, but uh, we, we have to recognize that we have come a long way. Well, I think it's women like you too that are very inspiring to uh, women here in Taiwan. Is there anything that you would like to say to uh, young people or women who want to uh, be like you and to be able to contribute uh, to Taiwan in a very special way? Well, um, I, I do, um, I, I'm grateful that there are so many young people in our society who are committed to, um, you know, kind of the public, the, the progress of our society. You know, they're interested not only in their personal careers or their families, their relationships, but they're interested in Taiwan's progress and, and that public um, commitment of our young generation, I think, is very important. And I think it's what drives our society. And so, you know, to all the young people uh, who continue to follow um, public policy, who follow public affairs, who are engaging in, in, in the public debates about Taiwan's international space, um, about the need to defend our democracy, um, about the need to um, overcome all of the, the challenges that we face internationally, but also in um, social movements, in, in advancing our social progress in so many areas. You know, the environmental activists, the um, LGBTQ activists, the, um, you know, the, the, you know, all of the activists uh, working for social progress and equality in our society have all contributed. And I, I really, uh, I'm proud of that momentum in our society, and, and I, I do hope that it will continue and that we all work to cherish the hard-won freedoms and the democracy that we have today, which is, you know, the, the institutions that has, has provided that space uh, for all of us to be able to speak our own minds. 
Well, Ambassador Shao, it's been uh, wonderful uh, being able to speak with you. And we thank you for the work that you're doing uh, for Taiwan uh, in the United States. And it's great to see that U.S.-Taiwan ties are very strong and growing uh, in many respects. So thank you so much for your time and uh, continue the great work you're doing there. Well, thank you. Uh, stay safe and be healthy. Thank you.